In this video, I'll be showing you how you can turn trash into treasure, rewinding a transformer from a microwave. In this video, we'll be wiring our transformer up to mains power. Trust me, you do not want to get zapped by the stuff. You'll be signing yourself up for a one-way trip to Painville or Deathville, so please be safe. So with that out of the way, what tools and consumables will we need? What we're going to need is a transformer pulled from a microwave, a length of copper wire for our secondary winding, a multimeter, hacksaw, hammer, metal file, chisel, flathead screwdriver, soldering iron or station, heat shrink or insulation tape, silicon corking, a couple of alligator jumpers would be real handy, masking tape, wire strippers and cutters, and an RDC switch so in the event a short did occur to earth, this would shut the power off immediately for you. So how much wire do we need for our secondary winding? When we estimate how much wire we'll require for the secondary winding, you can roughly work off that one turn equals one volt. Each turn uses around about 300 millimetres of wire, depending on the size of your transformer. With the latter info, you can roughly work out how much wire you'll require for your secondary. Add a couple extra metres just to be on the safe side so you don't run out. So the first thing we have to do is identify the primary winding on this microwave oven transformer. The primary winding should have thicker wire compared to the secondary. In this example, the bottom winding is the primary and the top is the secondary. Identifying the primary by comparing the wire gauge to the secondary won't work on all transformers from other sources. However, another way of identifying the primary is to trace the power cord on the microwave to the transformer. The winding the power cord connects to is the primary. There are other ways of identifying the primary on a transformer, but I won't go into detail in this video. Now it's time to remove the shunts to give us some wiggle room. The shunts are located in between the two windings. Using a scrap piece of wood or a screwdriver, I'm going to place the screwdriver on the shunt and hammer them out. Be careful that the screwdriver doesn't dent or scratch up the primary winding. If it does get damaged, I'll show you later how to repair it. So I've just set up my transformer on these couple of blocks to support it. I've got most of one shunt out already. You can see the shunt's actually just made up of a few bits of thin tin sandwiched together. So they might not come out as one piece. And right now I'm working on this shunt, which is almost out. So after a bit of frustration, I've removed most of the shunts. There are a couple bits of steel still in there, but the point of us removing the shunts, I'm not sure if you can see down there on each side where my finger's pointing, but we've created a gap um, between the two windings. What we can now do, because the, the secondary is glued in place, we can now lever down on the secondary. It's got somewhere to go because we created those gaps and it can break free of all the glue and lacquer they put on these. So I'm going to insert my screwdriver at the top here, hammer down on a sharp angle. I want to drive the screwdriver in between the transformer housing and the secondary to lever it down. So I've managed to drive the secondary down. You can see the gaps closed up there, so we've got a bit of room to work with now. I managed to get the screwdriver in about 10, 20 millimetres, so don't worry about driving it all the way through. It's just to sort of break everything up which will help us later on to remove a lot of the, um, the secondary. So now what we need to move on to doing is getting our hacksaw, and we're going to place a cut right here where the blade's lying. We're going to cut off this side of the secondary. Make sure we don't cut into our primary winding though, that's very important. Once this side is cut, that can be removed, 
and then we can use a punch or a screwdriver to knock through the rest of the secondary on the other side. So I've spent five minutes uh, with a punch trying to knock through the uh, secondary wire. We've got most of it out. Alright, so I've just finished removing the secondary. As you can see we've got a fair bit of this insulation which needs cleaning up. All that has to go including all the stuff that's glued inside the transformer housing. And there's also this second winding. It's actually a second secondary winding, or a third winding, whatever you prefer. That can go. Snip that out of the way, and that can go. So now the next step is to clean up all in here with a file. Again, can't emphasize this enough. Just be careful not to damage this second, uh, the primary winding. So here's the transformer all tidied up. Now despite all my procrastinating about how you must not damage the insulation, guess what I did? I damaged the insulation. But it's okay because now I can show you guys how to repair it if it does get damaged. Right at this point is the best time in the build to inspect the primary for any damage. I hope the camera can pick it up but right there you can see I've rubbed off the insulation and I can see the exposed wire underneath. So, what do we do here? We can either use lacquer, varnish, there's a few other products we can use to insulate it, like you can get liquid insulation, things like that. But, I've got an old tin of lacquer here. You can use a paintbrush, but I prefer to use a Q-tip just because I can throw it in the bin when I'm finished. And all I'm gonna do is dip the Q-tip in the lacquer and just brush it on the infected areas. Did I say infected? I meant effected. Never mind, moving on. It's a little bit on this side as well. So I'm gonna let that dry for maybe half an hour or so. Throw that away. And then I'll come back and do another couple coats. So our next step is we want to take the shunts. Now I'm going to assume that the shunts came out in pieces for you the same way it has me. If, it, if they have stuck together that's fine, you can probably use them as is. I'd still recommend making sure that they are covered in some sort of insulation. Uh, it's not that they have to be isolated from the housing of the transformer or the windings, but it just stops them rubbing on any of the insulated wire. So I'm going to take my stack and I pinch it tightly. I want this to be as small as we can get it so we've got more room for wire should we need the room. Okay, so that should prevent the shunts from rubbing off any insulation on the wire. Now we can move on to our next step. Now we will be spreading some silicon caulking around so if you have a latex glove lying around now would be a good time to put one on. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall our shunts. I'm just going to put a fairly generous amount of silicon on each side where the shunts need to be reinstalled. Uh, with an old screwdriver I don't really care about, I'm just going to spread that silicon along the bottom on the top of the primary and then we can go ahead and reinstall our shunts and then make sure they've, they're seated all the way down I'll probably squeeze out some of that silicon which is good Next thing you're going to want to do is take your masking tape and line the interior of the transformer. What this will do is when we're winding our secondary wire through here, 
it's going to make the wire slip past a lot easier instead of biting onto the sharp edges of the transformer housing. Now this isn't required but I do recommend it. Get a couple scrap bits of timber, cut them to the same width as the middle piece on the eye section of the transformer. You can see that fits there perfectly. What, we have one on each side and what this does is when we're winding our wire around the secondary, or we're winding our secondary, sorry, it's going to space the wire out from the transformer rather than it fitting up tight against the housing of the transformer. What that air gap's going to do is it's going to cool the coil a lot better. So if we're running a lot of current through it, it's going to help cool the wire down. Um, you can see on the factory wi uh, primary winding here, it does have a small gap. Um, so we're just going to do that to our secondary as well. Um, I'm just going to use a bit of hot glue. We will be pulling these out after we've finished winding our secondary. So don't go too crazy with the hot glue. But I'm just going to hot glue these in place so they don't move about while I'm winding my secondary. So we can finally get to the part where we start actually winding on wire to the transformer to make the secondary. Now, it doesn't matter which side you start. It doesn't matter whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise. The only thing I recommend is making sure that each wind is nice and tight and uniform. It's not that if it's messy, it won't work. It's just that if it is messy, you limit how many windings you can put on. Basically, you're wasting space. Um, I'm going to put a couple of turns on here and show you the basic process. But this is going to take a little bit of time and patience is a great thing to exercise when we're winding a transformer. And basically, we, want to, we don't want round corners like this. We want it tight, sharp, because that's going to use the least amount of wire and maximise our room we've got on our transformer as well. So I'm going to put 10 windings on this and then take a voltage reading and then I can work out exactly how many volts I'm getting per turn, per turn. and then with that figure I can work out how many turns I need to get to my target voltage, which in my case is 21 volts. So I'll put on 10 turns and I'll come back to you. So I've just finished winding on 10 turns. Um, I should clarify just in case I may have not mentioned it before. A turn is considered 360 degree rotation around the transformer housing. Half a turn is obviously 180 degrees. So we've got three, uh, sorry, we've got 10 turns on our secondary winding. I've filed away the insulation, they, they put a lacquer on the housing of these so it prevents them from rusting. So you use a file to grind away some of that until you've got bare metal exposed to make sure we've got a good earth and then connect a ground wire from your power cord. This power cord's come from the micro, same microwave I got this transformer from so that's worth, worth holding on to. Before we plug it in, what we're going to want to do is see if there is um, continuity between the primary winding and the, the housing of the transformer. If there is continuity there, we're in trouble. So I'll put that meter where you can see it. OL stands for overload. You can see when I connect those two, it zeroes out. So I'm going to put it on the exposed metal of fold away and on one of the terminals of the primary. And as we can see, it's not reading any continuity there, so we should be good to go. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do is you want to solder on, um, or you can use um, terminal clips. Um, you want to connect up your live and neutral wires to the primary. It doesn't matter which way they go around. And as I mentioned, do not leave off the earth wire. That's very important. If a short occurred between the primary and the housing of the transformer, that is what could save your life if you happen to be touching it, which you shouldn't be. 
Um, I've got my RDC switch here. We're going to use that. So if there is a short between the primary and the housing, this can shut the power off for us immediately. So that's good. Now, we've got this multimeter set to AC volts. And we've got both ends of our secondary winding here. So I'm going to connect the multimeter using these alligator jumpers. The reason I'm doing that is I don't want to be holding on to the end of the secondary in case we've done something wrong. Um, make sure these wires are nice and far apart and they're not going to contact each other when we plug in our transformer. So, fingers crossed, we don't all blow up in a great big cloud of smoke. I'll turn the transformer on. Can hear a hum. And it's a bit hard for me to read. But we're getting 10.4 volts. So that's great. So we can now divide our voltage, which is 10.4, by our amount of turns, in this case 10, and work out how many volts per winding we're going to need. Obviously, I'm going to need approximately 19 or 20 turns to get to my 21 volt uh, target. So the next step for me will be to wind on the remaining amount of turns and then take another voltage reading and see where we lie. So I have finished winding my secondary. I've put a total of 20 turns on it. And just on the quiet side, I have actually already tested this and validated that it does indeed put out 21 volts. I'll show you that right now. As you can see there, we're actually right on the money up. For my purposes, it wouldn't have mattered if this transformer put out plus or minus a volt. But as you can see there, we're right on 21 volts. It's excellent. Now, a couple of things I have changed, which I'll show you now closer, is I have taken out the wooden spaces and on each corner where the wooden space is where I've just put a cable tie and that helps the secondary hold its shape. Another thing I've done is fill any gaps around the secondary with a bit more of silicon caulking and that just helps the secondary stay in its position without moving about. So with that said, this transformer is ready to use in any electronic projects or requirements you need. It really is turning trash into treasure. I mean, you can pick up a microwave at the recyclers or scrap bin, wherever, for literally nothing, pull out the transformer, $10 of wire, and a couple hours up your sleeve, and you'll have a transformer that, if you had to buy commercially, would be anywhere from $100 to $200. Um, also, off camera, I did a test, and this transformer can actually put out 151 amps Obviously that's not sustainable because you know it will melt all the insulation right off the wire. Um, but for a couple second test it's all right. And that is kind of impressive. I mean, that is a serious amount of current. Um, I've used 15 amp wire. It's rated at 15, so it can sustain 15 amps. I won't be using that much. I'll be using around 10, but I like a bit of headroom. So if you want to see what this transformer is for, hit that subscribe button and you will see this transformer used in an up and coming project. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.